Hey, what's up, gang? I'm just uh, making another YouTube video. Now, we everybody knows that Cobra Tate, Andrew Cobra Tate, is blowing up. You know, he's all over the internet. Andrew Tate is all over YouTube. He's, you know, he's doing interviews. Uh, he's on podcast. Uh, he was on Fresh and Fit. You know, Andrew, Andrew Cobra Tate is everywhere. But a lot of people, you know, who are pretty new to, you know, they're not they're not familiar with his background, or whatever. They just assume that, you know, Cobra Tate just came out of nowhere. But uh, he's been around for a while. And actually, uh, the first time I heard of Cobra Tate, Andrew Cobra Tate, or Cobra or Andrew Tate, you know, uh, was back in 2017. When uh, he was a guest on Alex Jones' If Wars with Paul Joseph Watson, that's what I first heard about it back in 2017. When uh, he put out the tweet about depression, and everybody was in the uproar, and that's kind of like around the time when, um, you know, I think uh, even uh, Nicole Arbor she put out a video about depression that everybody hated, and. Uh, it was interesting is that, to be honest with you guys, I used to suffer. For, I used to suffer from depression, and I and I totally agree with uh, Andrew Tate's and Nicole Arbor's stance that you know we should just get over it. You know what I'm saying? It's a mental state. And what's so weird is that when uh, Andrew Tate and Nicole Arbor made their videos about depression. They, were, they, they received a lot of backlash from people. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, you guys want to stay depressed? I was depressed, but I don't want to stay depressed. So that's why uh, when Andrew Tate made that statement, made that tweet back in 2017, that really put, that, I think that tweet, the incident, like, you know, with him and J.K. Rowling were going back and forth on Twitter, or whatever. That I think that really put him on the map. Like early, you know, so before he got, he was as big as he is now. But back in 2017, that really, uh, that tweet, the controversial, the controversial statement, really put on, put him on the map back then and everything. And I was like, I, I totally agree with Andrew Tate. You know what I'm saying? You know, depression is not real; it's a mental state. And I used to suffer from depression, and I agree with them. But he had all these people who either are depressed or, de or suffer from depression, trying to defend depression. They're trying to defend depression. I'm like, why are you defending? If you're depressed, why are you, why are you defending depression? The whole point is to break free from depression so you won't feel depressed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? People are weird. And I, and I think uh, a lot of uh, people defend their dysfunction. They defend their mental state. You know, because they want to, I guess they, uh, they wear their depression or they, they wear their, um, emotional dysfunction as a, as a badge of honor or something like, you know, make, I guess it makes them feel special or whatever, but I never felt that way. It's just like, you know, if I felt, if I, when I feel depressed, I don't want, I was like, I don't want to feel like this no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, though, let me stop rambling and let me play this video uh, from September 12th, 2017. I'm not going to play the whole video because I'm not sure his video is copyrighted or not. But this was from uh, Andrew Tate's uh, interview on Info Wars with, with Alex Jones and Paul Joseph Watson. He is three-time ISKA kickboxing world champion, son of chess master Emery Tate. He is Andrew Tate at Cobra Tate on Twitter. And he started a triggering of immense proportions amongst verified liberals on Twitter over the past few days. When he tweeted, this is the tweet, depression isn't real. You feel sad, you move on. You will always be depressed if your life is depressing. Change it. And of course, the response to that, when I said I was going to have him on the show today, this is one example. Someone tweeted at me, an unqualified idiot interviews another unqualified idiot. Amazing stuff. They will bond well. Well, apologies, but noted doctor and mental health expert J.K. Rowling 
was unavailable for interview. So I'm talking with Andrew Tate, and that's what really gets to me. This idea that, oh, you, you have to be an expert to talk about anything. You have to be an expert, a medical doctor, a psychiatrist to talk about depression. Oh, but by the way, if you write children's books about wizards like J.K. Rowling does, you're, a, you're an anointed expert on absolutely everything, and you're the bastion of credibility. No, we're going to talk about it, even if it triggers you. So let's do it. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And you made a fantastic point with that argument of authority that, you know, you must be qualified to have an opinion on something. If that was the case, I think every single person who's ever voted would need a doctorate in political science. And of course, that's absolutely not the case. You're allowed to have an informed opinion uh, with or without a doctorate. And as you said, most of the verified liberals who replied to me were absolutely qualified in nothing. So it's ridiculous to even say. Well, it's like saying that women shouldn't be allowed to vote because they're not informed enough. It's just not an argument. Like, J.K. Rowling's a, a psychiatrist expert. No, we're going to have an opinion on it. You know, deal with it. But anyway, let's get into it, right? Antidepressant usage in America increased 400% in the last two decades. Depression, never been higher in America. Amongst teenagers and young adults, depression has increased 37% since 2005. You know, correlation is not causation, but, I mean, Andrew, whatever we're doing doesn't seem to be working, right? Well, I think this whole epidemic about depression is basically a misunderstanding of what depression is. People are talking about depression like it's this big external monster, like it's this condition you're going to catch regardless, like the common cold, and it's something that can't be avoided, and regardless of how good your life is and how perfect your life is. Is going to strike out of nowhere and you have zero self-control and zero ability to fight against it. And when people believe this rhetoric, when people like J.K. Rowling and these celebrities think that they're destroying the stigma, as they were saying, I, I was propagating a stigma. All they're doing is, is telling people you're helpless to control your own mind. You're helpless to, to defend yourself against any kind of negative thought. And the only answer is to completely succumb and surrender and take these pills. I do not believe depression is the monster people are saying it is. I believe it's a situational uh, phenomenon. If you're in a situation you're unhappy with, if you're in depressing surroundings, you're going to feel depressed. If you decide to be proactive and get healthy and build a business and do good things with your life, you're going to be proud of yourself and you're going to be happy. I think this is fairly obvious. Um, and a lot of the reason that these young people are suffering from depression is because they're lazy or they're dissatisfied with their life and instead of thinking, oh, I need to do something about this, they, build, they buy into the propaganda which is being splurted out by people like J.K. Rowling, and they think the only answer is to take pills because depression is a horrible monster that struck them out of nowhere, and that's absolutely false. It's, it's not true. Now, to be clear, Andrew, when we talk about depression, and we are talking about the majority of cases, we're not denying that traumatic events, the uh, grief, for example, PTSD for soldiers who fight in wars, you know, losing the loved one or whatever, specific traumatic events, we're not denying that those things can, can cause even uh, long-term depression, right? We're talking about something that's related to bad lifestyle choices, not individual traumatic events. Abs absolutely. It's perfectly normal for a human being to feel sad or depressed or upset about something or upset about a situation. I'm not saying that. When I said depression wasn't real, I was discussing people's attitude towards depression because people's attitude towards depression is I've caught depression. It's like Ebola. You know, I was going through my life and everything was fine and I love everything, but I caught depression and now it's impossible for me to be happy. And that is absolutely not true. Everyone has been sad. Everyone has felt depressed, but you have two kinds of people. You have people who accept it's part of being human, accept it's part of life and push forward. And you have people who succumb to it completely and decide there's nothing they can do about it. And the whole world should feel sorry for them. And when I pointed this out to people, people got extremely violent with their defense. And that's purely because the truth often upsets people it doesn't favor. It doesn't favor people who like to have excuses for their life. And that's why they were so desperate to defend it. If depression is such a horrible monster and I'm saying uh, there's a way around it, there's a way you can feel better. The fact that they'll come on Twitter and, and wish my death for trying to tell them they can feel better shows just how desperate they are to have this excuse for their life and, and, their, and their life choices. Depression is absolutely situational, and you have a choice if you're going to succumb to depression or not. It's as simple as that. Which is why it's kind of ironic when you get accused of being harmful by J.K. Rowling for, for committing this blasphemy, and that's basically what it is at this point. These people are more militant 
than vegans when you question veganism. And that's quite a high bar. But the irony behind it is they're the ones telling people there's nothing you can do about it, succumb to it, take pills, yet depression and suicides just keep on increasing. So if anything, they're the ones who are harmful to young generation especially, telling them that they can't do anything about it. But let me, let me throw this one at you, Andrew. If we accept that the majority of cases of depression, which of course most people don't, but that's our position on, on it, I did a video on this a few months ago. If, but if we accept that a lot of it is related to bad lifestyle choices, how do we explain people who have had success, who have accomplished things? I'm talking about people like Buzz Aldrin, historical figures like you know Winston Churchill complained about having depression, even Abraham Lincoln. You have a ton of sports stars, successful actors, actresses that achieve great success, but then go on to be depressed anyway. How do we explain that if we're saying that depression is about people not achieving life goals and making bad choices? Well, I think depression is absolutely reactionary to your surroundings. So you can be successful and still be unhappy with certain elements of your life, which can still lead you down a path of depression. But it's very interesting you mentioned Winston Churchill, for example. He said he was depressed, yet still functioned, still led the country in a war and was successful. He didn't do what a lot of these young people nowadays are doing when they say they're depressed and just refuse to work, pretend they can't get out of bed, pretend it's absolutely impossible for them to go to the gym, while he managed to achieve amazing things whilst citing he had depression than others. And I think one of the main reasons why, especially nowadays in the, in the modern world, these, society, these celebrities succumb to depression is because they believe the stigma. They believe the stigma that people are saying I'm propagating is not a harmful stigma. The stigma that has been propagated by people like J.K. Rowling is the harmful stigma. The idea that there is this unbeatable, untreatable, crazy monster that will enter your life and destroy you. If you believe that, you are going to lose. If you externalize any problem in the world, you're going to lose. If you're an alcoholic and you want to say, I have alcoholism, you're in a losing fight. If you believe that this is something that you can't help and it's going to destroy your life while you continue to get up, go That's to right. the store buy alcohol, drink alcohol, and, and come home and do it on repeat. And you want to pretend it's nothing to do with you. So it's a white flag. Alex Jones here, Andrew Tate. I'm having my lunch watching you and Paul. I just got to invite you on my main show because I was already aware of your work, but it's amazing hearing you speak uh, with Paul. It's so rational and real. There's a spectrum. A, a responsibility in life. If you're not doing the right thing, you're going to feel depressed. So that's a motivation for me when I'm not doing enough and not executing the way I know. Then I'll get a little bit bummed out, but that is something to ignite the fury in me to have victory. But beyond that, if you drink a bottle of whiskey, you got a huge headache from inflammation. That causes depression. It goes away once you're hydrated. If you got heat stroke, it feels like you're depressed. If I get sunburned or hike 20 miles and don't drink enough water and get dehydrated, I feel depressed till I drink enough electrolytes. So there's a lot of things in here, but all the studies show forest bathing, getting outside, that empowers us. Only watching TV, staying indoors, not getting enough sunlight in our eyes, that causes depression. So we ask, why is it all getting worse? This end indoor sedentary lifestyle is the main trigger then the drugs are admittedly more dangerous uh than than anything out there and so there's a lot of factors and big pharma has these people like jk rawlings who has pr folks tweeting for her. that's not jk rawlings knowing that they're trying to push people into desperateness just like earlier this year the facebook documents got leaked by their own executives who had a soul saying we want to make our users depressed alone controlled we want to isolate them with bots that aren't real friends i just had to pop in with that you guys are awesome thank you and I completely, completely agree with you. I mean, the number one way you stop anybody being concerned with the real issues of this, of this world, the real issues that we discuss on this show, is to make them so concerned and caught up in the fact that someone said a bad word to them once, that they're now depressed because of internet bullying. I've just been internet bullied for three days straight, and I can guarantee you I'm 0% depressed. So that's it. Deep in down. fact, you're empowered. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. They're turning them into permanent basket case victims. Yeah, there's a, this is a good video. I'm not going to play the whole video. And what I'll do is uh, when I upload this, I'll leave the link below to the whole video. And uh, when you get a chance, uh, go to Paul Joseph Watson's YouTube channel. Watch it there. Subscribe to Paul Joseph Watson. Give it a like, you know, to support. You know, so I'll give him, you know, give him new props since I'm sharing this video. But, but he was right, though.
you know, because when it comes down to mental health, you know, it's like they they never really tell you to like what they know about most therapists and most counselors. They're not really going to give you a solution to your problem. Problem, you know, they're good. You know, for like if you want like you know express your um, problems, what you know, it's, it's like when I when I went to a counselor. Uh, I probably saw a counselor maybe like for two months or whatever. Not not technically a therapist, but a counselor because I had to like have thoughts in my head about certain situations and I, and I had to like tell it to somebody who was unbiased. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So when I put it out there, then the, the counselor would give me feedback about what I said was on my mind and it really helped me out because it's, it's like a lot of stuff you can't really tell your loved ones or your friends because they kind of have a, like a bias or they'll they'll uh, if they talk I couldn't go to a church or uh, talk to like people at the church or whatever because they'll say like you know just go to Jesus you know <laughs> you know you know pray on it I mean that's not really a solution you know what I'm saying even though they may they may be sincere. But, you know, religion has its place. You know, praying, nothing wrong with that, all this kind of stuff. But, you know, this is 2022. You know, a lot of moralistic teachings don't really don't work. You can't really apply it in the real world in most cases. Unfortunately, unfortunately you could be a moral person, but morality or moral teachings will get you run over. And if you, like, go about your life, you know, being meek and pious and forgiving, uh, that that's kind of more like a detriment. So that's why I always tell people, like, you know, nothing wrong with reading the Bible, but I would like suggest people read up on the philosophy of the of the hero's journey. You know, like read uh, Joseph Campbell, uh, look into uh Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson's lectures and interviews, uh, Robert Greene, Forty Eight Laws of Power, um. Stoicism, Marcus Aurelius, Ian Rand, Atlas Shrugged, The Fountainhead, um, what else? Um, Frederick Nietzsche. And, you know, those are just a few people, a few authors and writers who really helped me out. You know, especially like when you read about Stoicism, that really, like, really, really helped me out. He got, th- got me through a lot of stuff. And, uh, but anyway, but like I said, when you get a chance, watch the video and check out uh, more stuff by by Andrew Tate. And the reason why I make this video is because a lot of people don't really don't know where, Cobra, where Andrew Tate came from, how long he's been around. So that's why I put up this video. And if you want to comment, comment below. You know, if you want, if you have want to ask some input, don't don't be afraid to comment. That's all I got to say for this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Peace.